still Hutch. My guest is still Eric Kahn. We're still doing the interview, but right now it's after the interview. The pressure is off. We've talked about some of the, the deep theological issues, which is not to say that we're that what we're about to talk about does not have some theological aspects to it. But uh, I want to talk to Eric just for a second about hunting. Uh, and this is my preface to the question, Eric. So hunting, uh, or, let me, I'll put it like this. One of the things that is missing in our culture is rites of passage for young men. Sure. So traditionally throughout every culture in the world, there has been a, a transition, some sort of rite of initiation from being a boy into being a man. And so in your, in your estimation, like how was, was it that way for you that there was a kind of an, an obvious change that, you know, dad or granddad or uncle or somebody took you out in the woods, handed you, you know, a loaded 30 alt six and said, be careful of your shoulder and drop the deer. Yeah. It's interesting because a lot of these rites of passages in the hunting world, like they happen without many of us really understanding what's happening. And so because of that, a lot of mm -hmm. times, like for me, the people who were essentially curating these rites of passage didn't even know that's what they were doing. Um, so my dad took me mm -hmm. hunting, um, which I super appreciate. Um, we had gone like small game hunting, you know, pheasants and stuff when I was, you know, you could do that when you're younger. But when you sure. turn 12 in Colorado, that is really like now you get to pull the trigger on big game for the first time. And I think it was actually my second year hunting. My first year, we didn't kill anything. But the second year, um, we had uh, a couple hunters jump some cows, and they ran in front of us. I had a cow tag. I shot this cow with my grandpa's .30-06. Uh, it was a 1903 Springfield rifle that had been uh, sporterized. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very cool to do that with his rifle. My grandfather had passed away at that point. And I was there with my dad. It was really, really a neat experience. I didn't realize it was a rite of passage then um, mm -hmm. until we were we were skinning the cow out. I think my dad had like gone to town or something or back to the truck. And it was really uh, the rancher who was um, just more like steeped in like older cultures. Like he was a bit older than my dad, for one thing. But he was very much into mm. studying, like, Native American culture. And as you know, sure. hunting is big. Like, in Native American culture, we're in the part of Colorado where the Ute Indians were. So if you hike to the high country, sometimes you can still find their hunt camps. So my friend George. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Because um, they would follow, you know, they'd follow the elk because the elk migrate. Sure. And so their summer hunt camps would be up in the high meadows in the mountains. So George is telling me about oh. this and... He's telling me about how, you know, when you kill your first animal, this is really an important thing. And, you know, and I'm listening just mm -hmm. a, as a 13 year old boy, like just with awe and fascination, like George is the coolest guy in the world to me, you know. And uh, right. at some point, like he just dips his hand. He takes his hand. I'm not paying attention to him. He just dips his hand in blood and he like slaps me across the face. And I was like, what just happened? And George was like, young Indian, welcome to the tribe. And I, it's funny because I've, to, I've told that story and it's like, it was kind of funny, but at the same time, like George was like deathly serious. Like, oh, you, sure. You've become a man. And so, yeah, you, you look at cultures, you look at like bar mitzvahs and stuff like that. People, people need that. Um, now, fast forward, I now know what rite of passages are and they mean so mm -hmm. much more. So this year, sure. Uh, my, this is a crazy story. My dad shoots a bull like a 330 inch bull, huge monster wow. bull. And we're like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. My dad shoots this bull. It drops in the trees. Like five seconds after he shoots, another bull runs out behind it. And my son shoots and drops that one. Oh, wow. So we kill two bulls. That's my son's first bull. And my dad hasn't killed a bull in like 20 years. Oh, man. so, I go up there in the trees. I'm like, okay, everybody wait here. We'll give them a few minutes. We go up there. And literally, these two bulls are like 10 yards apart. Oh, man. They're both just laying there dead. One shot each, dead. And I was like, this is unbelievable. But I was so conscious of this moment. Like, I had been working all off season with my son. I'd be like, you know what? As a man, you need to know how to do these things. And we need to learn marksmanship. And you need to learn trigger control and breathing. And let me tell you what, your heart's going to be pumping. So 
-hmm. there's a lot that you have to prepare for and preparing to hike in the mountains and handle carrying out weight and all these things. And, um, it was so cool because we, we looked at my dad's bowl and my dad is like boomer generation, like no affection kind of guy. And I put my arms around him and I was like, dad, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. Hmm. And he, you know, he's getting all emotional. Doesn't say anything, but he's getting emotional. Because, you know, what I've realized in my life, like, my dad never had that. Nobody yeah. ever did that yeah. for him. A lot of boomer dads didn't have that. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to love on dad and tell him how proud I am. And then I turn, and this is so cool. And then I turned to my son, my 13-year-old son who just killed his first elk. And I told him, I was like, Benjamin, I am so proud of the man you're becoming. And I just held him. Hmm. And you could just see the rest of the trip. To this day, if you were to ask him about his hunt, he glows. Awesome. You know. So, yeah, those are the experiences that I think you, you can create and curate, especially if you're paying attention, you know, you know what you want to create out of it. Well, thanks for talking to us about that, Eric. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate you coming on the podcast, brother. It's been a great conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And, folks, uh, see you next week.